So number 10 is the only one of these functions that we're trying to graph here that does not take the absolute value of an entire function. We're taking the absolute value of x minus 3, and then we're dividing it by something that's not in an absolute value. So the trick we used up to this point, which is graphing the function without the absolute value and then flipping the negative part, is not going to work. That only works if you're taking the absolute value of the entire function. And we're not here. Okay? Again, when we're taking the absolute value of the top part. So when that happens, although it's annoying, we have to think about that as a piecewise function and find out what the separate pieces equal, find out what intervals they're on, and then graph each piece separately. So it's not, it sounds like a lot of work when I just say it like that, but it's not really terrible. We're actually finding piecewise functions um, in the first part of this worksheet. It's annoying, but it's not terrible. So let's go ahead and do this. So v of x is, go so if x minus three is greater than zero, then v of x is going to equal x minus three over x minus three. Because the absolute value doesn't do anything, it just leaves x minus three alone because it's positive. Well, that's going to equal one. If x minus three is less than zero, then v of x will equal the opposite of x minus three. It's going to change its sign over x minus three. Well, that's just negative one. So v of x is only going to equal, look at this, one or negative one. So although it looks kind of scary, you got a fraction, you got absolute value, oh no. All it does is equals one or negative one. And you can see this, this is a pretty easy one to check this out. Plug in any value that makes x minus three greater than zero. Well, if x minus three is greater than zero, then that just means x is greater than three. So plug in any number bigger than three, like six. If you plug in six, you get six minus three, which is three, over six minus three, which is three. Well, that's one. Plug in any other number greater than three. Plug in like a million, okay? If you plug in a million, you get the same number on top, which is 999,997, over 999,997, yeah? And that's still gonna equal one. What happens if x minus three is less than zero? Well, that's the same thing as saying x is less than three. If you plug in a number where x is less than three, like negative two, when you plug in negative two here, you get the absolute value of negative five over negative five. But the absolute value of negative five is positive five, and positive five over negative five is negative one. That's what's happening. So these two numbers will always be the same thing, but the absolute value will change the sign if it's negative and that's why sometimes it will equal negative 1. So all we got to do is put all this information together. We know that it's going to equal 1 when x is greater than 3. It's going to equal negative 1 when x is less than 3. So to write that as a piecewise function, there's only pieces. It's going to equal 1 or negative 1. Okay, so even though there's an x in there, v of x can only equal one of two things. It will be negative 1 if x is less than 3, and it will be 1 when x is greater than three. And maybe you're saying, well, what happens when it equals three, Mr. Smith? Tell me, tell me, I just, I gotta know. Well, if you plug three in, if you actually use the value of three, you get zero over zero, which is an undefined number. So V of three is not defined, which means you don't need to have an equal sign over here because there's no, when you plug in three, it's undefined. You don't get a number back. So you don't need to plug it in. So right now, let's say you didn't see this up here. And I just said, hey, V of X equals this thing here, this whole nastiness, find V of three. You'd be like, well, there's nowhere to plug three in because this is only works when x is less than three and it only works when x is greater than three. Well, v of three is undefined. That's what that means. So that's how you take care of it. You just don't put an equal sign underneath either one of these. All right, so to graph the absolute value of x minus three over x minus three, all we need to do is graph negative one up until x equals three. Well, here's where x equals three. So we are gonna get up to this point right here, but we're not going to include it and v of x is going to equal negative 1, or sorry, yeah, I'm graphing this all wrong. We need to be negative 1, not negative 3. At 3, it's going to equal negative 1. That's right here. And it's going to equal negative 1 the whole way up until you get to 3. At 3, it's undefined, so there's no point there. And then past 3, it's going to equal positive 1. So it looks like this. This should all be. We're all at 1 here, okay? There you go. So that's what that graph looks like. A little weird. Um, and so this, we had this absolute value here and what it gave us was like a jump discontinuity, which you usually don't see in many functions. A jump discontinuity happens usually when there's a piecewise function or when there's like a weird absolute value thing going on like we just had up here. If we just have a nice normal function with no absolute value and it's not a piecewise function, 
most of the time you're not going to see a jump like that. You might see a hole or an asymptote, but a jump is kind of hard to really um, create unless you make a piecewise function, which absolute value is.